Welcome back. So today we have a new project that we're going to get started. We're going to take this and turn it into this. All right, let's get started. All right, step one complete. Had to go clean it all up. That took almost like a, a half day and got everything up off the wall that I could. We have a whole old uh, foil plate there where we used to have a wall heater. I can't peel that off without taking most of the sheetrock with it. But what we're gonna do is I got enough to go eight foot by eight foot, but because of the way the garage doors are mounted, going that tall just makes like the last two feet unusable. So what I think I'm gonna do instead is do four foot because they're still 96 inches long eight foot long i'll do four foot start up about 37 inches off the ground and that way if i do want to get a cabinet in here or something low lawnmower whatever i can uh still put it on here and still have access you know four feet 48 inches that's uh it's a good height compared to where the railing stops on the garage so i think this will be great for for being very utilitarian if it's not as much design i will since I'm not going eight foot by eight foot, I'll be going four foot by 16. And we'll be coming out this way and I'll be stopping where I marked my 12th uh, support there. So I will have to cut out around this outlet and I'll probably get a little extender box to go around it so I can make it flush once everything's done. But the next step for me is going to be to mark the rest of my studs and then we'll get the boxes open and get going. So I have my marks on the wall every 16 inches to designate my studs. Come back here. I line up my bubble. Pretty even. And I have a mark up here to mark the top of my 48 inch. Just use some blue tape, painter's tape. And same at the bottom here. And this will be my guideline for when I'm putting the strips in. Got a nice pencil mark to let me know where the studs are. And then I'll double check it. So here I'm double checking to make sure I'm still on the studs, right about center. And open up some boxes. So I just set up a little work area so I got to be on the floor. These came in all at the same time. There were five boxes. This is a Costco set. So there were four boxes of eight foot panels. And then there was a ship box, which is just the, uh, the hooks that come with the Costco kit. So the hook kit by itself. Runs about 100 bucks, what I found on postlight.com and Amazon. You can put a sticker on there, it says Team Lift. It's extra reinforced at the bottom and the top with pieces of cardboard and tape. Channels. We got some hardware. 
we've got looks like here's a J channel. So this looks like it's the four foot side channel. These are already pre-cut to four feet, which works great for what we're going to do. This is one of the sections here. The construction has this little overlap lip that's going to give you the ability to put the other one locked in place on top. You'll notice your screws will go along up here and your slats when you hang stuff will go in here. Um, the construction, these little back ends, obviously this is bracing, uh, but you could actually run cabling back here if you needed to. So, I'm going to think about that. And then we have, should be, So I got it all laid out. There actually are 10 uh, sections, main sections. We have the uh, additional two side trims and then the J trim for the bottom. There is a top trim piece. It is different from the J trims because it just has a little lip. That lip's gonna go on the top to lock that in place. And it'll be a nice ending treatment for it. All right, next step is to mount this bottom strip, make sure it's level. And where we want it, we should be starting on a stud and ending on a stud. So that will get back to the lines on the wall. All right, be right back. And it did come with a little box of mounting screws, you see right here. Oh, and a bit, it's a little bit. Huh, a little hex bit piece. I'm going to pour them into a little bowl here because I like to work on that. And we'll have that. All right, one side done. Again, just use some painter's tape, help me hold it, make sure it was level. One screw in the corner that goes through both pieces, and then one screw at the top. All right, next side. So, we're up to that panel, as I said before. So what I do is take measurements and I transfer them onto here. And I'm just gonna use this little uh, solid, uh, universal tool or oscillating tool and just uh, cut that out. 
Okay, so just a little update. This is getting the outlet in there. So it was using a Sawzall to kind of cut around this. I taped it off before I started cutting, try to resist some of the tearing. I used a spacer to bring this out just a little over a quarter inch. And when I put the cover plate back on there, that should tighten down around everything. All right. All right, there it is. All right, this took several hours and you can see it's all done. Two sections, four foot by eight foot. The hardest part was trimming out the PVC uh, for this part right here and then adding a spacer to the back so that they'd be flush. Other than that, once I got on a roll, it went pretty quick, stacking them up. Uh, can't wait to get organized now. These are the Pro Slat. They're four foot by eight foot. This is a two pack here. They also come in a four pack. Uh, Costco has them with an additional hardware set. You can pick them up almost anywhere, Lowe's, uh, Home Depot, Amazon. So uh, Costco, obviously. Um, they, they've got good reviews. I think they were packed really well. I got them from Costco. I've come to expect good things from Costco. So if there were one recommendation I could make is they were very dusty. So as I pulled them out of the box, they had lots of dust. I had to kind of wipe them down as I went. But other than that, it was a pretty easy build and definitely worth the buy. So make sure to add your comments, like, and subscribe. And we will see you next time. Bye.